Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin and it's time for your weekly wrap up. Another Monday is upon us and that means we're gonna catch up on everything we've done over the last week here on the channel. And I wanna begin first by thanking our newest Patreon supporters, Steve Creamer, who upgraded, and Liam Jaffrey. I want to thank both of them, as well as everyone who's contributed and all of you who watch on a regular basis. We are very close to 100,000 subscribers. We're just about there. Uh, so again, I want to thank everybody for your support. It's been a uh, great three or four years now doing this, and I'm really looking forward to the next four, hopefully. So we'll just keep uh, cranking away here. So what do we do this week? Well, we looked at the Lenovo IdeaPad 700. This is a uh, laptop with a built-in GPU, and it looks a little less game-like than uh, some of the other gaming laptops out there, but it did perform quite well uh, for around $1,000 or so. Uh, we also took a look at the SwitchMate, which is a, a little adapter you put on top of your light switches. It works with the rocker switches as well as the standard peg switches, and you can control it from your phone. I noted in the review that it kind of lacks some of the connectivity that I would like to see, especially connecting to home hubs, and uh, what was very nice was that SwitchMate actually went onto the video and started answering questions that I hadn't gotten to yet, uh, as well as some of my own concerns here and they did say that they're going to be making uh, the SwitchMate compatible with many smart hubs in the very near future. So as soon as that happens, we'll uh, probably pull that product back out and do a little bit more with it. I do like these uh, Internet of Things devices that don't require any real installation. This just slides on top of your light switch and it uh, will eventually make it smarter. Really cool stuff and worth checking out. We also took a look at the WD My Passport Wireless Pro. This is a essentially a portable NAS device that has a Plex server built in. There are certainly some limitations as to what it can do as a Plex server, but uh, you can watch my video and get a full overview of that. This is one of those videos where I uh, went and covered the features and I, all of a sudden I had a 20 minute video on my hands for uh, a not so simple product, but definitely worth checking out. And I've got a video index as I always do, so you can kind of dig through the parts that you want to see. Uh, and we looked at the $9 chip computer this is a full computer uh, for nine bucks that you can boot up and get working without much else. It's going to be limited to composite video at that price, but uh, it is actually somewhat usable as a computer, but it is really slow, and you'll see uh, all of that in the review. By the way, I have a full master playlist linked above and down below in the video description. If you missed something this week, uh, you can catch up with it uh, down below in that playlist, and I'll also link in other videos that I'm talking about here on the wrap-up. And now it's time for some more brands behaving badly. We haven't had one of these in a while, but we've got a good one today. I want to thank Stefan, who wrote in on this one. Uh, Warner Brothers settled FTC charges that it didn't properly disclose a video game that the company was promoting through one of its agencies. And what was happening was, was that uh, they were going out to very popular YouTubers, and you'll see a few examples of it in a minute, uh, asking them to play the game in exchange for a free copy of the game and compensation. Uh, the compensation ranged in the uh, avenue of $100 or so, all the way up to the thousand thousands of dollars, yet uh, none of these YouTubers or many of them did not disclose that they were compensated in addition to getting the free game, and they didn't really, uh, in the course of their agreement with the creators, really cover all of that either. And you can see here uh, what came out of that report from the FTC. Uh, they found that Plaid Social, the agency, uh, talked about the things that the creator would do, and they, you know, asking them to do a verbal call to action to click on the description box. They uh, want to promote positive sentiments about the game, so it's not a true review. Uh, they're not going to show any bugs or glitches, and they're not going to communicate any negative sentiments about Warner Brothers, its affiliates, or the game itself. And they also want a Facebook post and a tweet by the influencer to support their video. So clearly an advertisement, not a review. However, none of these creators, uh, in the course of making those reviews, actually disclosed that these were uh, videos that they were making for money. And uh, in addition to what you just saw here, the FTC found that uh, the description uh, to the creators was to put their, uh, their disclosure in the description box, but not actually uh, in the video itself. And that is really what happened here. They went after these creators because they didn't put the disclaimer in the video. I know a lot of you write in from time to time saying, why don't you just put it in the description down below? It's not enough. And this is a great example of a case where Warner Brothers is paying a lot of money to the Federal Trade Commission because the creators didn't put the disclaimer in the video. They put it in the video description. So here are a few examples that came out of those charges. Uh, one here is someone you may have heard about, PewDiePie, with at the time his 39 million subscribers, and uh, he did not have the disclaimer anywhere above the fold here in the description, and that was one of the things the FTC noted, uh, nor did he say in his video that he was being compensated for this review. Uh, we also have 
uh, uh, Civ HD, who uh, also said, this has been one of my favorite sponsored games, so thanks that I could play it for free. Uh, but again, not an appropriate or proper disclosure according to the Federal Trade Commission. Uh, there was also a example here of a Twitter post where uh, this uh, YouTuber Silent Core was saying, five reasons why I thought Shadow of Mordor was awesome. Uh, but again, no description or disclaimer that was visible to the viewer. And that is what uh, the FTC noted here in their charges against Warner Brothers. So if you ever wonder why, and I know a lot of you are supportive of my uh, lengthy disclaimers that I do here on the channel, but why those are embedded in the video itself, that's why. It protects me and it protects the brands that uh, send things to the channel to review. And it also pro protects any sponsors that I might get in the future as well. And it's actually helped me a lot. I think it's actually gained a lot of subscribers. I think a lot of brands are very comfortable working with me, knowing that I'm not going to uh, result in them getting charged by the FTC for uh, things that I might do when they're sponsoring something here on the channel. And I'm going to be very careful, as I always am, about the kinds of things that I do accept as sponsorship here too. So just wanted to point that out. Just another example of uh, some, finally, some things happening here to at least uh, protect those of us who are trying to do this honestly on the uh, YouTube platform and other video platforms too. And now it's time for some Q&A and I knew I was going to get these questions that you're about to see here related to the chip computer uh, because a lot of folks wrote in saying uh, this is really not a computer designed to do desktop kind of computing like you were showing in the video and I completely agree with that. In fact when I closed out the video I said it's better as a microcontroller and a headless Linux box than it is as an actual desktop computer but uh, when I looked at the company's marketing, they actually marketed this to consumers as something that can do all of the computer things, as they say, built for work, play, and everything in between. Now, I will give them the benefit of the doubt on the first box there that it can do serious work. It can definitely run Excel-like applications and word processing applications fairly well. We tested that in the video, definitely passed muster. But the other two things here, it didn't do as well. Uh, they say, Chip does the internet. And it says, use the Ice Weasel browser to surf the web. Check out websites send emails, post on social media, watch videos, and more. And you know what? It doesn't do any of those things. It just couldn't do it. It was like watching paint dry just to get a web page pulled up. You couldn't watch any videos on it because they uh, displayed so slowly. It was like watching an old slideshow or something. It really wasn't good at any of the things that they're claiming it can do here in the second box. The third box, they claim it can play lots of games, including running DOS box. And they're talking specifically about running old DOS games from your childhood. And uh, we saw it couldn't even run a Nintendo game at a decent frame rate, so there's no way it's going to run DOSBox at any uh, conceivable uh, rate of speed to make it useful. So I really look at this stuff when I'm putting together what I'm going to talk about in a review, because if this is what the company is selling to people, even though it's a $9 product, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work for nine bucks, I think this is what people should know that, hey, you're looking at marketing that really is not true at the moment. That computer might be capable of doing those things if they optimize their software, but as things are right now, it doesn't. And that's what I test against. Not only what I think it should be used for, which is more of a microcontroller and headless Linux box, but what the, com the company is saying it can be used for. And in this case, it doesn't measure up. And that is why uh, I tested it as a desktop computer because that's what they were focusing on. Interestingly, uh, the Raspberry Pi Zero, which costs five bucks, and in fairness, you do have to buy a few more cables and things that you might need uh, with this computer here. But uh, that one actually does those things quite well for a $5 plus accessory price tag. So I, I really wanted to kind of see how that $9 computer performed against other things out there around the same price. And at this point, it just doesn't do it. So I wanted to uh, make that clear here on the wrap up and how I look at evaluating things. Uh, Sam Rakabi wrote in about my Insignia screen. I've got it over here. And you know, did, people were, I had some discussion on this today. So this is my little TV that you see on the desk from time to time. The reason why you see it so often on the desk is because it's so small and lightweight. In fact, I can store it in that uh, cabinet behind me when I'm not using it. It's not a very good television. In fact, what I needed when I was uh, first getting the channel going was a couple of cheap monitors. So I have one in front of me that I look at for my program out. And then I have this one I use when I'm demonstrating things on the desk here. And it's partly because this desk is small and I needed something that wasn't huge on the desk that was going to block me in other shots. And these uh, cheap $85 televisions do the trick. And another good thing about this, because it is a television, uh, my video system, believe it or not, records at 1080i, not 1080p. I make it 1080p when I upload it. So uh, when I output video that I'm running through my TriCaster, because as you all know, I shoot everything live to disk, 
um, is coming out at 1080i. And a lot of my monitors that I use don't like that signal all that well. These televisions, as lousy as they are, uh, actually do accept it pretty well. So that's why I use uh, these little TVs on my desk. But the biggest problem with it is it has a lot of overscan. So when I'm doing reviews that have the frame rate of a game I'm looking at in the upper left-hand corner, I usually can't see it. So I have to go squint on my little program monitor here uh, from the TriCaster to try to get an idea as to what the frame rate is in real time. So it's not perfect, but it gets the job done. And I think it actually works very well given the limited size that I have. But I will be on the lookout for another similar size television that might have a little bit better quality. So if you know of any, uh, do let me know about that. Uh, last thing was really an interesting question here that I got from Grim Reaper and something I was meaning to talk about anyhow. And he was talking about the uh, PGS handheld console. And what this is, is one of these uh, Kickstarter projects that really to me seems like it's a little too good to be true. So let's go in and take a look at their uh, Kickstarter page here. And what concerns me is that uh, these folks have raised a lot of money for uh, what they say is going to be a Windows 10 handheld computer. And it's got some cool stuff on here. I mean, when you look at it, this looks like a really cool device. You've got uh, you know, a little slide out screen here. You've got a secondary display on it as well. You've got a full joystick uh, out there. They have some ideas for having that second display kind of be an on-screen keyboard. They're going to put an Atom X7 processor in it. Uh, and all well and good, certainly a project that I would love to back. But when you really start digging into the project itself, I have some concerns about it. The first one uh, involves their prototype. So first of all, you're going to see all these games being played. Uh, this is not being played on their device. It's being played on the device running with the same processor that they plan to use. I believe this is a Surface tablet that they were uh, demonstrating some of these games running in, uh, not their actual hardware that they plan to build themselves. So a lot of this is just you know speculation as to what they would like to build, but there really isn't a prototype that's useful. And the thing that really got me uh, was when we got down to the bottom here. They have all this great stuff, yada, yada, yada. We keep scrolling down about how awesome this product is. And then when you get past the specifications, past the stretch goals, past the sharing goals, past the rewards, when you get all the way down to the meat and potatoes of stuff, we see the prototyping. The current prototype is assembled from component devices such as the Surface, IPEGA, and Cube. The prototype is able to run most PC games and software, yada, yada, yada. But here's the problem. The prototype is being made from other already existing products. They're just mashing things up and trying to get them to work together. This is not dedicated hardware that they've designed for this project. So the prototype that they have uh, is in many ways kind of like that retro VGS that we talked about a while ago where they uh, stuffed a uh, Super Nintendo inside a Jaguar case and called it a new product. This is kind of along the same lines. I don't think these guys and gals are trying to mislead people, but I, I look at this as one of these Kickstarter projects that I've been burned on before. Not to say that these folks will do that. Everyone, you got to assume everyone's going in with good intentions, but right now they don't have a product. They have somebody else's product that they've kind of mashed into their 3D printed case here, but they don't actually have something of their own. I looked at the bios of all these folks on here also. None of them have experience making computers, first of all, uh, nor do they have any experience in actually uh, building something that is going to be able to be mass produced and uh, distributed out to the wild. And when you go up to the top of the screen here again and look at uh, the price that they're asking for. It seems like a pretty good deal at you know $260 or so for a pretty decked out computer. And all the stuff they keep adding in their stretch goals is, is stuff that I'd love to see, but just doesn't seem realistic to me. So I would, I, I, let's put it this way. You got a couple more days left on this thing. If you uh, did back this, I would consider pulling your backing out because I just can't see how this product is going to get made. I'd love to be proven wrong, but um, I, I, just, I just would not put my own money on this. And I put a lot of money into Kickstarter projects. This one uh, raised a lot of red flags for me. And their video is really weird too. I'll put a link in my uh, master playlist and you can check that out too. But there is something that is coming out uh, from a company that actually has a track record with it. And I did back this one on Indiegogo. And I normally don't like going to Indiegogo campaigns, but uh, the company making this is one that I think a lot of you have had some familiarity with. They actually uh, do deliver. And I've used, a, I actually own a product of theirs. Uh, and that's the GPD Win. I'm going to click over to there real quick so you can see what it looks like. And uh, what they have here is an actual prototype that's ready to go into production. And they are, will be doing pretty much the same processor, that Atom X7 processor uh, in a handheld device. Here's the prototype. They're doing uh, temperature testing on it already. Uh, they have a bunch of 
Hilton built, I think uh, a little bit further down here on the screen, so you can see uh, that this thing is really coming together. It's going to really be what that other product was looking to be, uh, yet this one exists and you can buy it and it should be out now in about two months or so. And uh, GPD, who's manufacturing this, actually has a very good track record with these kinds of devices. They've mostly stuck to Android devices, but it really isn't a huge jump to go into these uh, Atom uh, X5 Cherry Trail or X7 Cherry Trail processors because they are single uh, board computers, very much similar to how Android computers are put together. In fact, that was Intel's strategy was to come up with a uh, board that can compete with some of these cheap Android computers. Of course, that's going away, but uh, we'll have it long enough to uh, get products like this out to market. And uh, this thing exists. It will be real. It's going to cost a little bit more than that uh, Kickstarter we just looked at. It's about $330. But if you are looking for a PC that you can fit in your pocket, as they say, uh, this one will do it more than likely. I am going to be getting one of these. I've paid for it already. So uh, as soon as it comes, you can check it out. And if it's something you like, you might want to buy one or not. Who, who knows? Who cares? But um, it's something that I think if you're going to put your money into a portable Windows computer like the one you just saw, this one exists and will be real from a company that uh, cranks these things out and makes some pretty good ones. The GPD XD, which is my go-to uh, gaming handheld right now from uh, runs Android, it's great. And uh, I think uh, this company can really uh, deliver something pretty cool. So definitely uh, check those out. I would definitely avoid that other one just because I just don't think it's ever going to get made. And I think a lot of people are going to lose their money on it too in the process. So just a little warning there. Uh, your mileage may vary, of course. So now it's time for a Q&A for you. And what I would love to do is know if you're playing Pokemon Go. I, I have never played Pokemon in my life. It was something that I was a little bit too old for when it came out on the Game Boy. I think my brother played with it quite a bit and a lot of his friends did too. But uh, this I've been getting into, it's kind of fun. And then uh, late, earlier today I learned that when you get your Google account attached to it on an iOS device, it takes over everything. It basically is giving uh, full access to your Google account uh, to the Pokemon app. So I have since revoked its access and I'm using it now on my uh, Android device just around the house here until they fix that issue. So if you are on iOS, I would actually strongly suggest that uh, you take a couple days off from the game and revoke access in your Google security settings. I'll put a link down below to an article uh, that you can read to learn how to get rid of that because it really is uh, pretty uh, dangerous at the moment. Not to say that they're doing anything wrong. I'm sure Nintendo and whoever makes this game has got a lot of security, but I'd prefer to err on the side of caution and not give uh, random apps full access to everything under my Google account. I would suggest suggest you do the same. But I'm just curious if you've all been playing it. Uh, it's been kind of fun just to try to figure out how the game plays because there's no real instructions to be, <laughs> to be heard of. And one of the problems that I have living out here in Connecticut is that there's not a lot of stuff around me. So uh, there's one town near where my uh, day job office is that has a huge uh, park and in there is a big Pokemon gymnasium and a whole bunch of these little Poke stops. You can go in and get all your items and stuff. It's actually pretty en engrossing kind of a game and it's a, uh, really taken the world by storm. And, and for Nintendo, who's been avoiding doing uh, games off of its own hardware for so long, this is like a major hit for them. They have a social network that just came out of nowhere and I'm really eager to see how long this lasts for, how long people play this for, and what it means uh, for the future of Nintendo games too. So a lot at stake here in the industry. It's really uh, driven Nintendo's stock price up quite a bit because shareholders have been waiting for Nintendo to do something like this and now they've got a real hit on their hands. So that is Pokemon Go. So this week we've got a bunch of stuff on the horizon. We're going to be looking at the pocket chip. So this is the chip computer, but they have a little handheld thing that goes with it. I bought this when I uh, backed the uh, Kickstarter earlier, and this actually works better than the chip does on its own. And I'll show you everything that this is all about a little bit later this week, so stay tuned for that. And we're also going to take a look at the DJI Phantom 4, and you can see a little sneak preview of that video here. Uh, the uh, device can actually follow things optically with its camera and its computer. It locks onto something and then just follows them around. It's really a cool feature that uh, is new to the Phantom 4. It also goes a little bit faster and it's got a couple other things too. So I think what I'm going to do in my review is actually compare this to the Phantom 3 uh, which is still available yet costs less now. And there are some things that if you don't need some of these extra features, the Phantom 3 might be a good alternative because it has a lot of the same uh, basic functionality and overall performance, but there's a few new things on this one that might be attractive to some folks, but if you don't need all those things, uh, the Phantom 3 might be a good choice still. And I'll kind of break down those differences in the video when I get uh, that shot later this week. I had some fun playing with it this weekend. And we're going to take a look at Moonlight. And this is an app that's on just about every single platform, and it allows you to stream games from your 
gaming PC running with an NVIDIA GPU, uh, so you can play those games in other rooms of your house. And that's something you could do, of course, with an NVIDIA Shield device, like the Shield TV or the Shield tablet. This is the same protocol, but it works on just about any other device you can think of. And I've been playing around with it using iPhones and iPads, Android devices, and I found one, at least for me, that's going to work great. I'm going to show you how I'm going to be doing that because uh, my plan, once uh, No Man's Sky comes out, is to spend a lot of time with that game, and I don't always want to just sit here in my basement kind of secluded from the rest of the house. So uh, this will be my uh, way of getting my No Man's Sky time in when I only have a few minutes here or there as I'm uh, running in between kids and other household chores that I have to do as the dad of the house here. So uh, looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to sharing my, uh, my results of my testing with you too. So be on the lookout. It'll be later this week also. Lots of good stuff coming up this week and who knows what else might just show up. Uh, oh, and by the way, we got another hard drive in from Seagate. This one's rather interesting. It's a uh, external hard drive that has a USB hub built in. So it's actually really well suited for a lot of those single board computers that we look at because you can get not only a powered hard drive, this one's got eight terabytes on it, uh, but you got a USB hub also so you can have other powered USB devices hooked up to your low powered computer. And we'll be looking at that as well. Now, if you want to help the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv slash Patreon and make a monthly contribution to the channel. We also have our fan funding at YouTube Fan Funding, which you can find at lon.tv for a one-time contribution. I will be, I keep talking about this, but I will be hopefully in the next week or two getting my official uh, business documents filed with the state of Connecticut here and hopefully bring on our part-time worker very soon to help lessen my workload. Uh, those funds will go to help that person uh, get paid. Uh, and um, in the meantime, though, those funds are actually helping to purchase the items that I buy for the channel to review and then resell, uh, including that uh, WD hard drive we got this week. That's going to be going up on my store very shortly. So if you want a good deal on it, be on the lookout for that. And I want to tell you about Prime Day at Amazon. This is not a sponsored message from Amazon, but I am an Amazon affiliate and I have a special bounty set up for getting people uh, to sign up for Amazon Prime to get the uh, Prime deals. It'll be happening Prime Day here in the United States, which is July 12th. A lot of good deals coming up. Uh, and if you want to get in on that and are not a Prime member, if you click on through the link, uh, you can help the channel while you also open up your Prime subscription account. So definitely worth checking out if you want to get one of those deals uh, during Prime Week. You can stay glued to your computer all day long, clicking away at all the stuff that's going to be flowing across your screen for you to buy. Now, if you want to engage with the channel, you can certainly do so. We've got my weekly email list at lon.tv slash email. I will be letting folks know when the store gets restocked with stuff. I've got a GTX 970 GPU that I'm pulling out of my gaming PC. That's going up on the market. Uh, we've got that WD hard drive and a few other things too. So definitely uh, sign up for that email list to get notified first. Uh, lon.tv slash Facebook for our Facebook page. The Reddit page is at lon.tv slash Reddit and the aforementioned store at lon.tv slash store. I'm going to be going through here hopefully this weekend and starting to find more stuff to uh, get cleared out of the space here because I'm finally cleaning up the old space upstairs and I'm trying not to make the new space downstairs as cluttered. So uh, your, my loss will be your gain. And that will do it for this week on the weekly wrap up. If you have anything you want to talk about, do leave that comment down below in the comment thread there. I really appreciate all the opinions and advice and other things that folks leave for me. And I don't always get to reply to every comment these days just due to the volume of comments that are appearing, but I do read everyone and I really greatly appreciate everyone for your viewership as we uh, round the bend to 100,000 subscribers. I think we'll be there probably by the end of next month, hopefully. So if you do know people that aren't subscribed, tell them to subscribe and we'll be starting up some uh, giveaways and whatnot as well. Once again, I get everything organized here. And that's one of the things that Helper is going to help me with is get some of the things that I want to do done uh, so I can start doing more giveaways and all the other stuff too. So that'll do it for this week. And this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.